Hello everybody, my name is Lori Anderson, contributor for FreedomOutpost.com, as well as host for Resurrect the Republic, RTR Truth Media on RBM Network. I want to get this information out to you just in case you are not aware of it. The NRA um, has put out a message, so let's cover that. New Mexico right now, uh, it's asking to please submit your comments on a proposed concealed carry rule changes. Let's make no mistake, anything that has to do with more rules, more regulations that has anything to do with your unalienable right to bear arms absolutely is unlawful and no one should support it. So we're going to go over this and then I'm going to show you something that you can use to quote when you do reach out in order to speak your mind about these new rules. The NRA is reporting that on Tuesday, November the 1st at 1 p.m., the New Mexico Department of Public Safety will hold a public hearing to receive public comment and input on the implementation of the Concealed Handgun Carry Act. The proposed rule changes will establish new requirements and procedures regarding licenses to carry, instructors, and firearm training courses. The proposed rule can be found here, which they do do leave the link. I will leave everything in the description box below so you can find it. And the hearing will be held at the below location, Law Enforcement Academy Auditorium, Tuesday, November the 1st at 1 p.m., 4491 Sorelos Road, Santa Fe, New Mexico, 87507. You can also send your comments to email Kathleen period Romero at state nm.us uh, they need to be sent to that email no later than the meeting time when it begins on November the 1st be sure to know that this is extremely important that you address this or you're gonna have some more unconstitutional laws laws that they have never had the right to try to pass in the first place. Now, why do I say that? I'm going to leave a link in this description box below, of course, for each and everything that I cover in this topic. And I have the hope and prayer that you will get this message out to everybody so that they can um, speak their mind about this. The purpose of the proposed amendment or the amended rules ostensibly is to address changes made to the statute with the passage of House Bill 431 in 2015 related to concealed handgun application fees and training requirements for New Mexico, New Mexico Mounted Patrol and Military Service members and to account for advances in technology that allow for electronic fingerprinting of concealed handgun license applicants. Number one, you have to remember these are law-abiding individuals and there is absolutely no excuse for fingerprinting somebody, a law-abiding citizen, for them having their unalienable right to bear arms. All that is is making a database. It will not stop any type of crime that's been proven over and over again and we need to make sure to speak out against this. I'm going to give you a little bit of paper ammunition, if you will, for you to be able to use. And it's already been ruled unconstitutional by a federal judge. So I want to show you this. However, um, this does affect all New Mexico residents who carry in-state under the authority of a reciprocal state license or anyone moving to the state who may currently legally carry under the authority of a reciprocal state license could be forced to apply for a New Mexico license. This is all about once again control and creating a database on each and every individual that has a firearm. It is unconstitutional, it is unlawful, and yes, Hitler did everything legally, so let's remember that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go over here just to show you a couple of days ago a federal judge struck down the assault weapons ban and firearm registration and upholds open carry. Now let's be specific about something and the mainstream media loves to try to play this game. So let's knock this out in the first go round. There is no difference between open carry and concealed carry when it comes to permission for you to have a right 
to have your self-defense weapon on you. That is geography. It does not change the amount that you have been trained. It does not change your accuracy in any manner whatsoever. All it does is grants you the right for element of surprise. If you have a need to use your firearm in self-defense, then you have a little bit of a strategic advantage because the individuals do not know that you are armed. And this, a lot of times, with criminals, if they see uh, you are open carry, then they're going to know you're the first person that they are going uh, to look at to uh, disarm because of the simple fact they know you would be a threat to their criminal activity. So make no mistake, concealed carry is no different than open carry with the exception of these states and the federal um, bureaucracy wants you to believe that there is something hugely different and that you should have to seek permission from them in order to conceal carry but not to open carry and there is absolutely no difference in the training in the um, ability to use your weapon it just simply is geography either a shirt is covering it or a jacket is covering it or it is not. So the federal judge that struck that down uh, was Ramona Mangolia, chief judge of the U.S. District Court for the Northern Marina Islands. She struck down the Commonwealth of Northern Marina Islands CNMI ban on assault weapons and firearm registration requirements while upholding the constitutionality of openly carrying firearms. And I'm not going to go through this, but uh, the person who challenged his name was Paul Murphy, and Paul Murphy, this is what he challenged. The requirement that he obtain a license and register his weapons. Number two, the restrictions on how he may restore his weapons at home. Number three, the ban on large capacity magazines. Number four, ban on rifles and calibers above .223. Number five, the ban on assault weapons. Number six, the ban on transporting operable firearms. And number seven, the $1,000 excise tax imposed on handguns. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to absolutely go down to the bottom of this article and show you what she ruled. Mongolia ruled against the firearm registration, which also means obtaining permission from the state or the federal in order to be able to get your self-defense weapon. They have absolutely no right, and they know that this was just put down. And if you check out the UNSATT and the UNODA, you will see this is exactly what they're trying to implement, and they're trying to implement it backdoor way through legislatures. So Magnolia ruled the, against the firearm registration. She ruled that the CNMI's ban on rifles with calibers greater than .223 burdens the core of the Second Amendment right to armed self defense and must fall. She also struck down the assault weapons ban as regard to the following accessories. Number one, pistol grips that protrude beneath the action. Number two, thumbhole stocks. Number three, folding or telescoping stocks. Number four, flare launchers. Number five, flash suppressors. Number six, forward pistol grips. She explained the decision against the assault weapons ban by stressing the possibility that having forward grips and other accessories might actually make it easier to shoot a firearm accurately, thereby limiting the danger of stray or misplaced rounds. So she also stated, Mongolia ruled against the CNMI safe gun laws that limit open carry, declaring that, quote, the Second Amendment secures a right to bear arms for self-defense in public, unquote. She observed that, quote, because the safe completely destroys that right, it is unconstitutional regardless of the level of scrutiny applied, and the court must strike it down. She concurred with President that finds certain limitations on carry to be constitutional, but observed that being subject to limitations does not translate into being subject to elimination, unquote. Quote, so we need to make sure that we understand that there's a federal um, judge that has already ruled uh, in the decision about having 
to register and all of that good information. Court documents stress CNMI is bound by the Constitution, treaties, and laws of the United States. This means constitutional provisions covering civil rights and liberties in the United States apply equally in CNMI, and this includes the Second Amendment. Thank you to this judge for, for doing the right thing. And I want to thank Paul Murphy, who is a U.S. Uh, he is a veteran, and he served in active duty in Iraq and Afghanistan as a U.S. Army Ranger. So he, as well, was fighting for not just his rights, but everybody else's rights, and I want to thank him for doing that. Still fighting the fight and standing up for the people um, daily, and that is exactly what we need. So we, what do we, what else do we need to know? We also need to know that Breitbart has reported, and this is not really new news, but this is a new article. The Gun Control Australia admits criminals are still armed and it launches new amnesty. Of course, most people know that Hillary Rodham Clinton or Hillary Rotten Clinton, however you want to say her name, is uh, very much for the Australian gun ban. It was forced confiscation, and it was confiscation via a buyback program. It's very, uh, she's very much for that Australian way. The Australian people have spoke out against it and um, exposed it left and right, and their crime wave, whether it be robberies, rapes, murders, whatever the case may be, since, they're, since their government did this and disarmed the law-abiding citizens, crime has risen dramatically and the people are unarmed and unable to do anything about it. They protect the criminals and not the law-abiding people. So on Friday, the government of Gun Controlled Australia admitted that hundreds of thousands of illegal firearms remain in criminal possession and launched a new amnesty in hopes of persuading said criminals to turn over the weapons. Yes, we're sure that is going to happen. So what is also being shown is known criminals were caught with firearms 755 times just in 2015 compared to 143 times in 2011. The epicenter of the problem is a triangle between Collaroo, Campbellfield, and Glenroy in the northwest. Well, I would say I am kind of wondering also if it has anything to do with our criminal government, and I am not saying that it does. However, it is very well-known knowledge that our government, who wants to control the law-abiding people's um, right to bear arms, they are complicit with running guns and running uh, ammunition and, and guns and surface-to-air missiles and all sorts of horrible, horrible things to horrible people, whether it be the Mexican Sonola drug cartel or whether it be ISIS or whether it be any faction of that. Anwar al-Sharia, al-Qaeda, ISIS, ISIL, uh, Mushahideen, any way you want to name it, they arm train and fund terrorists who love to cut children's heads off. They cannot claim that they do a background check on these individuals, yet they sell them surface-to-air missiles. They sell them guns. They sell them and equip them with um, some really nasty things. And this out-of-control criminal government wants we, the people, to gain their permission. Since when do we gain permission from criminals to exercise any unalienable right we have. Another thing you need to understand in, in full is that the Constitution limits the federal government, not the people. The state constitutions limit the state, not the people. The people are what created the state constitutions and that was the limitations that they were allowed to cover and that was it. They were not allowed to violate those. Same with the federal government. The, the states created that contract with that federal government. So the federal government, also known as the central government, was able 
to hold the states accountable and the states hold the federal government accountable in that agreement, but it had nothing to do with limitations on the people. We must speak out and get this information uh, to the individuals who are trying to, once again, do another gun control scheme. Absolutely not. So, under the proposed rule, 10.82.15a, all New Mexico resident, residents must attend a department-approved firearms training course taught by the department approved instructor unless he or she received a license by transfer of an out-of-state license. Resident, according to the proposed rule, means a person who, for a period of not less than 90 days immediately preceding the date of application for the license, has been domiciled in New Mexico and does not claim residence anywhere for that purpose and otherwise entitled to claim residence in another state. You need to read this entire article and I do not know whether NRA supports it or does not support it. I don't care if they do or do not. You need to stand against this if you want to fight for your rights. A federal judge has already struck down the registration provisions and we need to stand on our unalienable rights and hold the states as well as the federal government accountable for their violations of such. Thank you. God bless you. Semper Fidelis. I hope this information has been helpful and get it out to the people. Until next time, thank you. God bless you and good night.